everybody to uh, the third episode of the Bottom Line Podcast. Luca, I'm also here with Mike and our mortgage broker, Tony. Uh, we're uh, we're definitely here to bring value with our third episode, and we hope you guys enjoyed the first two episodes. Uh, topic for today, one of the main topics I will be talking about is how to get your property ready for selling your house. Um, so we're going to go through the do's and don'ts, as some may say, uh, for selling your home mm-hmm. and what you can do to maximize your profits or maximize the dollar at the end of the day, the bottom line, as some will say. Um, that's what it's all about. It's the what, bottom line. For your, for your property. And then we're also going to touch on refinancing. Um, we, we know a lot of people that... Um, you know, maybe have their first property already and now they're looking to upsize, their family's growing or whatever the case may be. So we feel like that's this is going to be a beneficial topic to a lot of those people and even people who are downsizing too, right? We'll, we'll touch on that and how how we can help you navigate those markets. And uh, it's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be great. How are you guys feeling? Good? Feeling great. good, feeling great. Feeling like uh, I may be interested in learning a little bit about uh, how to set my house up if I'm going to be selling. All right. Am I in the right well, place for that? You are in the right place. In the right place. You to got find it. Out about that. Yeah. Let me know, boys. What, what's what what what's so before anything? What do I definitely not want to do? Not don't want not to want to do. Like that's the number one thing I want. You want to go? No, no, you go. No, no, you go. You go. You go. Okay, I'm gonna relate right it away. to. Okay, no problem. I'm gonna relate it to today's market. Of course. Yeah. Today's well, market. Better market than the present. Yeah. So we're just the start of September now. Fall market's coming up. Um, I would say it's, it's safe to say we're in a buyer's market right now. Definitely. Um, the number one thing you do not want to do, That's, do not do this, do not do this. Do not overprice your home right now. Yeah, that is how you scare your buyers. That is how you scare the buyers. Oh, goodbye. Away. Yeah. Ciao. Ciao. Yeah. That's how you scare your buyers like, away. Bye, There's bye, a lot. Bye. The inventory has grown. It's not a crazy amount, but inventory has definitely popped up. Um, since I'd say the spring, I guess we could call it. We're in and around like 16,000 units on MLS right now, 16.2, something like that. And buyers have options. Um, so that being said, if you overprice your property, you're not going to get a lot of action on it. And you're not going to, and you're not going to get the engagement that you need on it to sell your property. At the end of the day, showings turn into offers and offers turn into sales. And if you don't have any showings from the beginning, you're not going to get any offers and you're not going to, you're not going to be able to sell your house. Right. Um, now that's not to say, you know, there's obviously strategies towards that. That's not to say price your home. If you want a million dollars for your home price at a million dollars and that's it. But if you want a million dollars for your house and you know, that's what it's worth and that's what your agents, uh, you know, giving you an an evaluation for, you're not pricing it at 1.3 or like, 1.4 1.4 like there's, that. There's no advantage to that. You're just yeah, zero advantage. Zero advantage to that. You're only doing yourself actually a disservice. And there's a lot of times that Mike and I, um, and you can talk to this too, Mike, like yeah. we tell people we're not going to, we just yeah. don't list we've, your home. We've like, had clients that want to, uh, we tell them what it's worth, their house, like roughly. And they'll, they want like three or 400,000 over list price. And we say, we're not going to do it because yeah. it's, yeah, it's not it, going to work. It's, it's not going to work. Everybody for kind of, you there's, guys always say, like people always think their house is the best house. Yeah, which is which fair. Is, Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Right? go ahead. No, like it's it's yeah. They have an emotional attachment to the house. That's why we come into the picture, we try to take that emotion out, try to bring them to the reality and say, listen, this is the best strategy. This we are going to get you the most money. We will guaranteed, but we got to do it with this strategy, yeah. right? Yeah, you let them so, know the bottom line. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, and there's a lot of times where we'll. we'll not a lot of times. I shouldn't say a lot of times. There's the rare occasion that we'll have to turn a client down in terms of listing their house because it doesn't benefit them. If we list your house on the market and it's three four hundred thousand dollars over, um, you get that legit three three four hundred yeah. thousand. That's I'm it's being happened. nice. Yeah, sometimes it's five six hundred. Yeah. People think people have these yeah, lucrative expectations, which is fair, right? You don't know the market, but once somebody tells you, you know, what you should be getting for your house, it should it should navigate you either left or right. Should I list my house? Should I not list my house? And if you are listing your house, you should price it accordingly. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. if you don't price it accordingly, you're only doing yourself a disservice. If it sits on the market, looks stale after a while, right? So back to your question, the one thing that you definitely do not want to do is overprice your house in today's market. If we were a year, year and a half ago, I would say you just throw a number, a number on the board, throw a dart and yeah. anybody could have sold a home then. Yeah. Anybody could have sold a home. Now it's very different. It's very, very different. And um, 
I've yeah, noticed this is where it pays where you have a good agent. Back then it was yeah, like what you just said. Yeah. List the house, get thirty offers. Yeah. Sell it, it to the highest bidder and Bob's your uncle. And right? People uh at that time they didn't even need to go like even to go see a house. No. Right? And that's kind of even yeah. something that's more uh common nowadays. People just go online, click, click. Well, click, they got click, virtual click, tours too. now, that's virtual pretty tours. good, right? But yeah, for sure. Also, like the you're seeing what a what a what a realtor can do for you now. There's a lot of agents that are probably getting weeded out right now because of the market that we're in. So you're kind of Back seeing the, gym the, posts. the cream is ri- <laughs> <laughs> the cream is bumping, rising to, bumping the weights. The Let's cream go. is rising to the top. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> let's let's switch gears. Let's go to financing. Um, yeah. There's a lot of times where we have clients that are looking to upsize. Um, and before they upsize, they got to know what they can afford, right? They got to know one, what can exactly. they sell their house for? Yeah. Two, what are they going to put in their pocket? Three, what can they afford? So a lot of the times we give you a shout, obviously, our yeah. mortgage broker. Yeah. And we check in and we see, you know, what, what can the clients do once they sell for X amount of dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we uh, basically work on an application for you uh, as the client, um, prospecting certain uh, numbers. Right from a sale, right, and seeing it, it, you know if I sell my house for two million, I got a mortgage of X amount, right, five hundred k or whatever it may be, you know, after fees, this and that, plus these are my income numbers. What can I qualify for, right? And uh, right now, um, what we're experiencing a lot of is people wanting to hang on to the rates that they got in uh, mm-hmm. 2020, 2021, 2020, even twenty twenty two. Tough. Um, and seeing uh, the importance and see the lack of transparency that maybe they had from the bank or from uh, their other brokers where, you know, they don't have a portable mortgage, right? Or a transferable mortgage where they can take that current mortgage rate and everything associated with it to another house, right? Or to another property, right? So uh, then they're, they're, they're upset yeah. because now mm-hmm. they're susceptible to these higher rates, right? So this goes into them not having the right knowledge yeah, yeah. When not when, that I'm blaming Instagram or anything, but <laughs> so, right, the, you guys have a lot of products to offer as as mortgage 100%, agents, hundred percent, right, hundred right? percent, right? We're 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 shopping your file to sixty different lenders, right? A, B, C, private, all all across the board, whatever you want to call it, and um, it's it's really important as an upsizer to. Uh, in this particular scenario, to know what you qualify for before you go ahead and make that move, um, to have a maybe you guys typically will give you know the minimum amount that that you expect this house to sell for. Yeah, it's always you right? we, we work with safe numbers all the safe, time. Right? Safe numbers. Everything else is can, gravy. Yeah, and then we can we can uh, work within that time frame. Yeah. Um, and but it's really really important to be able to know uh, whether or not you know your your mortgage and its terms are transferable or portable to another. Yeah. Um, to another property. It's really, really important. Back to the uh, the selling aspect, Lou, when do you think is the best time to sell a property? Like what, like summer? Yeah. We're going winter. into fall. Is this, is this the time or? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, typically if we go by on history, obviously yeah. spring is the time usually that a lot of people try spring to get their market, house on the market, right? Talks, well, yeah. The spring market, right? Because, you know, you, you sell in the spring, maybe people move in the summer and their kids are ready for school by September, right? Um, that's not to say it's always the best time to sell, especially these, like the last two, three years, the market's been decently volatile. I guess anybody could say that with confidence. Um, so there's different times where last winter, 2021, 2022 winter was the best time to yeah. sell a property for sure. Mm-hmm. Right. The peak was in February, February, February right? Was that's, peak, right? You that's know anybody winter. who sold in February? No, no. I don't no. know. You don't know. You know what? <laughs> no. We'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah, we'll come back to that. But um, that was him. <laughs> the be- like people can argue that sometimes the best time to sell a property is in you know the summer or late fall because there's not a lot of people listing their property. Less so there competition, might, right? There might be less competition, right? And you have more active buyers. Um, it all depends on circumstance. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. what's the goal? What's the end goal? Are, you know, are we trying to upsize? Are we trying to downsize? When do we need to move by? Um, that that all comes into absolutely account. closing dates, extended yeah. closing dates. Uh, right now, even unfortunately, you know, to tell your point, circumstance, we might get pushed into a time where people have to sell their house. Never get like into that yesterday, yeah. you know, because they can't afford it anymore. The affordability yeah. crisis is is it's looming, yeah. right? And we're gonna we're starting to see those foreclosures, those defaults start to tick up 
a little mm-hmm. bit and um you know hopefully something it gets yeah. gets done we've seen an right? example of this like we've had to sell a client's property like asap we got it ready in what, like three or four days yeah maybe right? even less yeah, maybe less from the moment we met with them to the time it was on mls two days maybe 48 wow. hours yeah we were staging at 3 a.m yeah we, were, we got they thought we were crazy yeah. it sounds <laughs> but nuts. it's like we're trying to it's not nuts. time the market but we were trying to get them out of the position that they were in right so yeah. we oh. need to act quickly yeah it, you it, got a strike you got to strike while the iron's hot sometimes, yeah it right? really was like and then and that goes back to your point when's the best time to sell right it, it really it's all circumstantial 100 percent. in this situation Actually, it was Mike's client. Mike had a client where they wanted to capitalize on the market, and we were able to, um, you know, help them with that. But they thought we were nuts. They thought we were crazy. We were staging at three a.m. Um, you know, cut we, the grass. We cut the grass for them. <laughs> we cut um, the weeds. We did everything outside, inside, full service. We landscaping. Full, Sandels, full landscaping service. Landscaping came back. Full yeah. service. <laughs> yeah, little tidbit. We used to do landscaping back in the day when we were uh, in uh, university. A little side two men, uh, two men in a truck. Two, two men in a truck. truck. The movers who care. The original. You guys, oh. honestly, you, you don't. You don't really. Uh, you, you don't take any shortcuts. You guys always are going balls to the wall. You know, like working as hard as you can for your clients. That's where does that come from? That that like honestly determination. This, that that drive. You know, like who does that? Three a.m. staging. I, I think the way I, I don't look think at that's it, common. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the way I look at it is if you're gonna. If you put your trust in us and Mike and I, we're going to make sure we go 110% for you. Like at the end of the day, this is your biggest transaction, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to put your trust into us, we're going to make sure that we give you everything, no matter what that takes. If that takes us staging at 3 a.m., obviously with our stager as well. Shout out Jess. Uh, um, Southway. Yeah. But we uh, will make sure that, you know, we're going beyond the extra mile for you. We're going to make sure that if you are actually serious about getting something done, we're going to get it done for you. Mm-hmm. And uh, we take your uh, your trust very seriously, obviously, just like you take our trust very seriously. Right? It's a two-way street. We talked about that last episode yeah. or the other episode. I don't and, remember anymore. Yeah, there's been a lot of examples, like a lot of cases where we'll be running up a deal at midnight and some people, mm-hmm. some realtors, they'll post that on Instagram. Like, oh, wow, I'm doing a deal. I meant like, yeah, they should be deal. part of your job. Like, big deal. This is what we got to do. I was at a convenience store at 5 a.m. the other day. Yeah. Shout out Sam. You're the best, Sam. I, I wanted to be there. Right. But, and yeah. There, and there's some ages that won't even answer after 6 o'clock. Can't yeah. get all of them. That's yeah. it. They work 9 to 5. Goodbye. Yeah. Ciao. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So mm-hmm. that's, that's, where, that's where our advantage. Yeah. And uh, the, like to that as well, like because we work with you, the synergy, we'll call you. I can call you at 1 a.m. Be like, call me when. Gotta, gotta call me when you're long. Yeah. Call we got to figure this out right now. Right? Anytime. It's again, and I'm sure you feel the same way. You can talk about it. If a client, you know, puts their trust in you, you make sure that they, you know, that trust is one thousand percent. You got, I got clients nowadays that you know it's it, it it's starting to mount right there. If they're in that variable position, um, people who I didn't put in that variable position coming to me, uh, almost on the brink of tears. Right, they can't do it anymore. Yeah, it's no uh, joke they don't want to lose their place. Right, um, we're. We're, I'm in it. I'm in it. It's impactful to me too. It's stressful to me as well. Uh, you know, I'm, like you feel that, what they're going. Yeah, through. that obligate that that monetary obligation is not on me, but they're my client now. They're my. I'm in it with them the whole way through, through the thick and the thin, right now. And um, you want to call me at 9 p.m. You want to call me at 10 p.m. You want to call me two in the morning, text me whatever email. Uh, you'll you'll get a response. Yeah. Right. That's that type of uh, tenacity yeah. that we we have and that we we show for our for our clients all the way I, through. I should say uh, too, just to go back to that house that we staged at three a.m. We also sold it like two days later for a, an incredible amount of money. Like it hasn't yeah, even it's... been touched in the area. But if we didn't stage that house at three a.m., they would have missed the boat. The market took a serious turn, right? Like right yeah. after, I'd say a week, maybe. Well, I think it was five yeah. days, six days, serious something turn. like that. So we were able to capitalize for them, which is great, right? And I mean, it's a win for them, win for us. So win, like, everybody we'll back wins. Back to our first right? episode, right? That's what we're talking about. We want everyone yeah. to win here, right? So yeah, yeah. No, but even even in these con- current market conditions, right? When we sell a house, a little bit different now than back yes. then during COVID, we go door knocking, right? Let the other uh, neighbors know, hey, this property is for sale. If you know anyone in the area mm-hmm. or you have some friends or family members that want to move here, yeah. like we have a property, right? Yeah, door knocking but is not dead. We went door knocking too together. Went door knocking the other day. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, 
Interesting Honestly, experience. I don't I don't know too many mortgage brokers that are door knocking, but I, I you know tag along with the boys to. Uh, it's fun to get out we there. Get it's out a good there. time. Get a couple f bombs. Chat here a little there. bit, right? Get, yeah, you couple get a, people tell us off. Yeah, yeah. It's just people cl- holding the door like we're still in the uh, COVID times, right? Barely yeah. wanted to show their face, or they'll they'll buzz in through their ringer and say, uh, get, "What do you want?" Or you know, get I, the uh, fuck off my property, <laughs> right? Right. That those are those are the types of uh, experiences you have, but. We also are getting some yeah. some great uh, I made, interactions, um, right? I made one mistake door knocking. I don't know. I think I told you guys about this, but I uh, I went door knocking and I honestly I think I knocked on like thirty five homes. Nobody answered the door. So eventually, and I was by myself this day. Usually I'm not, but I was by myself. So I just kept knocking, and then I I, I didn't wasn't even thinking anymore because nobody was answering the door. But sure as shit, somebody answered the door, and uh, I was kind of stunned when they answered the door. So instead of saying. We just sold a home down the street. I actually told them we just sold your home. <laughs> and that lady tweaked on me. She lost. She just sold my fucking home. She I heard goes, about this in the news. My home? She, she lost it on me. She's like, get off my property right now. I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't. I just walked away. I was like, okay, now that lead is gone. That's yeah, sure. she gone, man. You lost that. We, ch- we just crossed that one off the list. Okay, we move on. But funny stories, obviously, right? When you go door knocking, you meet some great people and you make some good connections. Your network grows and we found buyers door knocking yeah, many door knocking, times. Yeah. Many, many times. We're definitely people that just don't sit still. Like right now, we're in a buyer's market, right? And if you're selling right now, it's not easy to sell. It's not. You got to be priced right. You got to show right. You got to be, you, have a, you need to have a realtor that's following up for you. But you also need somebody who's going the next step, right? You need somebody who's going to go door knock. Who's going to go find that buyer for you? Yeah. There's buyers out there. But you got to go find them, right? And if you're just sitting down at your computer waiting for your phone to ring, yeah. you got no chance. I know yeah. everyone relies on like MLS. Oh, it's on MLS. Like Big there's deal. other forms of advertising and not yeah. everyone sees MLS. No. Yeah. Right? So you got to go out there. Yeah. We, boots we're, on the we're ground. We're out there. Boots on the ground. Yeah. Knock, 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 and knocking away. And for me personally, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very... Um, humbling experience to kind of see how it goes from literally never speaking to someone to then doing a transaction yeah, with it's them great. and yeah. building a relationship and you know you know it starts off hey it would be impossible to get your you know phone number or email are you against, are you against sharing that information right these are our uh our, our very probing uh question methods um, right yeah and then all of a sudden you know you got you got a relationship going for X amount of years. With, I think to sum people. to sum that part up, um, we don't just sit still waiting for a house to sell. You don't yeah. just sit still waiting for business to come in. We go out. We actively make sure that we're working for our sellers, yeah. right? And you too, like just because somebody's selling a property doesn't mean you're not working for them, right? Like there's a lot of people that will say, should we pay off our mortgage? Like when they sell their property, right? Mm-hmm. Should we pay off our mortgage? Should we reinvest? Um, you know, we're trying to upsize, whatever the case may be. And that's kind of where you come in. Um, we work out the numbers. We work yeah. out the scenarios, right? Yeah, We're and, all about scenarios. So, so then, let and, me ask. Let me ask you a question: Does paying off a mortgage uh, save money in the long run, or should maybe somebody with money that they collected should they be reinvesting it somewhere? Like, what do you think about that? Because a lot of people will have sorry, a lot of people yeah. will have cash on them, right? I got two hundred k. Should I slap it on my mortgage right now, or should I take that money and should I reinvest it in a, in a rental or something like that? It, it's I, it's very uh, situational, kind of like the previous uh, answers that we gave before. Um, no two situations are the same, right? But uh, for the most part, obviously, the longer you're paying interest, the the the, the more you know you're you're losing out on your bottom line, mm. right? Uh, so if you can al- alleviate that payment, you save on interest in the long term. However, yeah, if you come across from a sale of a property. Um, you know, and an, an extenuating amount of uh, of funds, right, or a, a large amount of funds, two hundred k, like you mentioned, you can use that and reinvest it into another property. We can work out scenarios. You know, if you buy, if you're putting twenty percent down or whatever it may be, and um, and then you, you're building your overall portfolio, right, and then you know that that property can continue to you know accumulate equity. You pull that out, buy another one, buy another one, right. We these are those those uh, those. Um, the Burr methods and, yeah. and whatnot, yeah. those oh, different types of different things, yeah. uh, approaches that people could have, right? So uh, to answer your question, is it always the best idea to pay down your mortgage right away? Depends on your, your situation, right? Yeah. If, if you yeah. if, That's if, fair. if you're later That's on in point. life or you you can't handle the, the payments, yeah, let's get rid of it. So there's a lot of people that 
after they, they cash on their investment, they're asking, you know, what should they do their, with their money? Should they put it down on their mortgage? Should they reinvest another property? Um, should they put it in the stock market? We're real estate guys. So we'll, we'll guide you with real estate. Um, and we'll tell you that it's a great investment and depending what you want to do, obviously, but there are people that want to put in the stock market. Us personally, I would tell you, uh, it's better to put it into real estate because if you have a hundred grand and your property is worth 500 grand, you're making the appreciation of that property on the 500 grand, but you've only invested in a hundred, right? So if that property goes up 5%, 5% of a hundred grand, right? is only going to be five, five grand, two. but 5% on 500 grand is going to be 25 grand. So you're making the appreciation on the actual property value. Whereas in stocks, you're making the appreciation on your actual investment. So we see a much bigger return in real estate, obviously. Yeah. Um, and to that's add, sorry to add on to that. If you're interested in doing real estate investment, there's another layer to that where we go, okay, where, what's the best investment for you? Yeah. Right. Where you see online, a lot of people saying, Oh, buy this detached in Toronto. That's there's so many two options. million and it's really not the best investment. Like, yeah, it's, or, and it's to my point, not feasible. Not yeah, feasible. You, can't not do feasible. It. you don't have enough. Well, we yeah. have a client, actually all three <laughs> of do us, yeah. all three of us have a client that just purchased a convenience store. And yeah. I don't know if you guys remember, but we were looking to purchase maybe a house, right? Mm -hmm. And then we switched really quick. We yeah, went to the convenience was, that, store. That, she, that took she, a 180 real, real quick. Real quick, yeah. Actually, to her credit, it was her idea. It wasn't yeah, her idea. Yeah, she came across yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Someone refer referred it to her? Or, yeah. Or she saw it. I can't no, I don't remember either, to be honest. I just remember her telling me about it. And we jumped right on it, and we got her a, a great deal on a convenience store. And she just closed, and she's a lot... She texted me the other day saying it's the best investment of her life. It's it's about being creative sometimes. It's not always about, you know, just purchasing the next property yeah. or whatever the case may be. She bought a business that's doing wonders for her and her family. And it's going to allow her to buy that house that, that she, she wanted originally to buy wanted, in the first she, she set herself up. Yeah. Right? And close on that investment yeah. that she made before. Too. What do you guys call it? Cash out refinance or something Cash like that? Cash out What's refinance. Some yeah, yeah, you. Look at you. Yeah. We're learning. Up, We're learning. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's all about making informed decisions, right? And and making sure that the, it's the right move for you. Make it, yeah. you can make a move, but you know sometimes it's gonna take you in a direction that's not. Uh, and we've had that ideal property in Durham, that disaster. Right? Oh, oof! They yes. thought they were ready. Yes, they that was another it. one of all three of us. Yeah, 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 all involved. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they just. Long story short, they they couldn't close on it. And so they, let they me give, them, let, let's give a little background. A backstory. Yeah. No, I want you to tell the story because it's your client. But the backstory is we sold uh, a property in Oshawa right when the market was about to turn. This was a different property than the one we were explaining before. Um, it sold firm and then things went awry. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> yeah, they weren't for, we won't get into the details of why they weren't able to close, but they weren't able to close the property. Right. Well, the buyers that that were buyers. not our clients. They were not our clients. Yeah. yeah. You guys referred basically your your buy your buyers, people who bought your the property, property yeah, our property property that you listed, couldn't close. So you you refer we them refer them to to me to Tony to handle because I know he can he gets it. We done. made it happen, and you did. We get got it. Yeah. them the we got them the the financing. But they just didn't a beautiful close. product, so, which yeah. you know, uh, you know they 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 were lucky enough to encounter. But unfortunately, they had never seen the property yeah. Yeah. before. No idea what they, they had never seen into. this property before, and they just didn't close. We yeah. had to resell it after. Yeah, yeah. we ended which up reselling it, which is great. It ended up working out. Yeah. But now this buyer that didn't trouble. close is on the hook. Yeah, for they're probably fleeing the country right now. Hundreds of thousands. There's a of good dollars chance. There's a good chance. Yeah. The realtor on the other side, you know. It, this is a scenario where they misled inexperienced realtor or yeah. in yeah they they misguided so right their buyers and th the client told me they had literally never seen the inside of the property Nuts. until the uh, uh appraiser shared photos with them that's nuts yeah, we sold the property so again and they went in firm was, she wasn't, wasn't our client yeah. the yeah. seller was our client seller yeah so we sold the property but wild wild it was wild times um. When it comes down to just to, just to kind of wrap things up real quick here, when it comes down to selling your house or preparing your house to sell, um, pricing number one, massive, especially in today's market. Massive. Is that your bottom line? 
No, this it's is... not my bottom line. I'm just going to go through some. Oh, I just I want to make sure our we listeners we're understand we're exactly no. what we're talking about. Oh, we're okay, not at the bad. bottom line. I thought we were there. Not we're yet. at the second last line right now. Okay. <laughs> um, pricing, <laughs> staging. We're on top of the bottom line. Staging. A lot of people think it's it's a, it's just a cliche thing. The it's right agent. Massive. Having somebody who guides you properly is huge too. And what I mean by that is an agent who gives you facts, doesn't just sugarcoat things. Isn't just, trying to just make a sale. Or even Inside. just get a listing. A lot of people just want to put a sign on your lawn just so they can get calls from it, right? Yeah, they can post silly. on Instagram. Yeah. I'll take yeah, a look post at me. picture. Oh, Mike loves the Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at my new listing. It really grinds also, your gears, eh? Hey? Yeah. Uh. yeah. I would say those <laughs> are the three them. things. Let's go. You know what? I think we, we touched upon what we need to touch upon. Yeah. Now. Let's go to our bottom lines. What do you think? Mike? Now What's we can your, go eight. Now we can. I had you the second line. last line first. Let me give the points. And now let's go bottom lines. The bottom line. Now the yeah. bottom line. The bottom line. Uh, it's kind of repeating what you said, but in a buyer's market, right? Like, sorry, in a seller's market, you need to prepare yourself. You need to know what's ahead of you. Like, kind of get everything in order, or else you might not get that top dollar. Which the bottom line. It's all about the top dollar. Hundred uh, percent. My bottom line is. Before you do decide to buy or sell, in this case, we were talking about selling, um, do the numbers, work through scenarios. I always, you know, give max scenarios, middle scenarios and bottom end scenarios to all my clients so that they know where they stand, right? That way, if they sell for top dollar, if they sell for, you know, just the bare minimum, they know where they're at and what they can afford and what they can do with that money. Take that money buy yourself another property or yeah. pay down your mortgage. Let's talk about which option is the best route to go. Yeah. I would say if you're selling an investment or selling your principal place of residence, I would say align yourself with the right people. I would say make sure that you and your realtor have an understanding and your mortgage broker, if you're going to be upsizing or whatever the case may be, or reinvesting, make sure you guys are aligned and make sure you guys understand each other to the point where, it's going to be a successful transaction for you, right? If you're thinking your house is going to sell for two five, but it's worth two, and your realtor is telling you that somebody something's got to happen there, where you guys got to realign yourself, right? So make sure you're aligned with the right people, and don't be afraid to ask questions, and uh, make sure whoever you're using. That's a couple bottom lines, right? Yeah. Make sure whoever yeah. you're using, bottom, bottom, bottom bottom make sure bottom whoever you're bottom using line. has <laughs> your best interests in hand, and that's the bottom line. That is my actual bottom line. Yeah, best interests in hand all the time. Best interest in hand, best interest rates in hand. Oh, there you go. Let's go. I love, you know what? We're going to end it like that. Then that's a perfect one. In our next episode, you can uh, count on me talking about uh, interest rates and how they're actually uh, impacted by different uh, variables. So what causes them to go up and down? What impacts fixed? What impacts variable? And how you as a potential buyer or investor or upsizer or investor, um, uh, home purchaser, whatever uh, you are, whatever you are, <laughs> <You're> something. <laughs> how you how you can uh, get ahead of these fluctuations, what you can do and what you can search for, and what yeah. I can do for you to help you get ahead uh, in terms of securing the products that you need and the financing that you need. And we're also going to get into uh, investing. Uh, we're going to dive deep, more a little more deeper into that. Like one of the topics we'll talk about is uh, Airbnb investing. Do's and don'ts about that. Should you do it? Right. So your That's experience the, with it. We have some experience thing. with it. Yeah. yeah. We'll talk about yeah, we'll talk about Blue Mountain. Yeah. yeah. Blue. The chalet. The chalet. Life at Blue. <laughs> uh yeah, it's gonna be great. The next episode's great. If you ever want to be an investor, or if you are an investor, you should one hundred percent you should be tuning into that. And if you want to have some laughs, of course, you can always tune in as well. Um, thank you guys for tuning in to episode three of the bottom line podcast. We can't wait to share what episode four has in store for you guys. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.